Welcome everyone to Mayo Clinic q and I'm Dr. Helena Gazelka. We're going to take a little break from COVID today to tell you about some new research in the uh, world of medicine. When people seek emergency care for shortness of breath, it can be difficult to ascertain the cause for that. New research from the Mayo Clinic found that using an electrocardiogram enhanced by artificial intelligence is better than standard blood tests at determining if shortness of breath is caused by heart failure. Here to discuss this is the lead author of the study and chief fellow in cardiovascular medicine at Mayo Clinic in Florida, Dr. Demi Adedin Swayo. Sorry if I mispronounced your name, Dr. Demi. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, for our um, consumer audience, could you explain to us what heart failure is and um, how common is it? Sure. So heart failure is a condition in which the body is unable to pump adequate blood to meet the body's demands. And usually this goes untreated. It can lead to progressive worsening of the heart's pump function, multiple symptoms, and in late stages, an organ failure. It affects about 5 million Americans currently and is also responsible for more than 1 million hospital admissions every year. It is also the number one reason for hospital admissions amongst Medicare patients. Is difficulty breathing or feeling short of breath a hallmark of heart failure? Yes, it is. It's actually one of the more common symptoms that we see with heart failure. Uh, typically, what would happen when someone went to the emergency room or to their physician uh, and there was concern about heart failure? Are there a certain tests that you would usually do? Yes, so your physician would conduct a careful history and a physical e examination. In addition to this, they may need additional tests to confirm the diagnosis or rule out other potential diagnoses. Tests that are typically considered in the setting of suspected heart failure includes an ECG, also known as an electrocardiogram, blood test, an example of which is the NT pro DMP, and some sort of chest imaging, either a chest x-ray or a CT scan. And with COVID-19, I, I said we weren't gonna talk about it today, but we are. Um, difficulty breathing, we have all heard, can be um, one of the manifestations of a COVID-19 infection. So how would you know if a patient came to see you whether they had COVID-19 or if you needed to be concerned about heart failure? That is a great question. And I think that it makes this study even more relevant given the ongoing climate. So shortness of breath is seen commonly with COVID-19 as it is with heart failure. Usually your physician would obtain a history in addition to physical examination to try and differentiate between these two conditions. But sometimes this is challenging as with other respiratory diseases as well. So having an additional test that can provide more information to the managing physician is essential to being able to tell apart these two conditions. Can you tell us just a little bit about the study that, you're, that you've done and that you're publishing? Um, why was it done and what did you find out? Yes, I would love to. So the reason for the study is we wanted to evaluate the effect of an artificial intelligence enabled ECG in an acute setting to differentiate between patients coming in with cardiac dysfunction who tell us they are short of breath. So we evaluated a total of 1,606 patients who came into the emergency room at all Mayo Clinic sites uh, and the healthcare systems as well with difficulty breathing as their primary complaint. What we found out was that the artificial in, uh, intelligence enabled ECG was able to identify patients with cardiac, significant, um, cardiac dysfunction much better than nt pro -BMP with an AUC of 0.89 compared to 0.80, essentially outperforming nt pro -BMP, which is currently the standard of care test that we would use in an acute care setting. That's really interesting about artificial intelligence. We're hearing so much about that now and about how it might be used in medicine. But I'm wondering, can't the cardiologist or the, the physician just look at the ECG and tell these same things? So even though the ECG is recommended as one of the tests that you would get in a patient suspected with heart failure, it is not specific for heart failure. If it's abnormal, it can make you suspect an underlying cardiac abnormality, but still cannot give you an idea what the heart pump function is. The ideal test for that is an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart that tells you how well the heart pump function is. 
And in order to get this test, it typically requires skilled personnel. You also require that the images be interpreted interpreted by a cardiologist, it also takes time to perform. So it is really not feasible to get an echocardiogram in the emergency room as quickly as you would need it in order to make care decisions. This is where this AI-enabled ECG comes in and provides you the additional information that you would get from an echocardiogram. Now, is the AI-enabled ECG a different than a typical ECG machine that we see wheeling around the hospital? The reason I'm asking is because that I was taught in medical school and residency that I wasn't to believe what was written at the top of the ECG as the uh, result and that I was to figure it out myself and be certain that it was correct. Excellent. That's a great question as well. So it is the same ECG that we use. They obtained a 12-lead standard ECG on the patient, but what we do is we also run this ECG through an AI-based algorithm that gives you a probability of cardiac dysfunction in this patient. A threshold is already set so they can help you know whether this is a positive screen for cardiac dysfunction or a negative screen. Can you share anything about how this um, study and the outcomes of it might have applications in the time of COVID-19? Yes, I believe it becomes even more relevant, like you said. So the number of hospital um, emergency room visits is increasing because of COVID-19. More people are coming in with difficulty breathing and because of the challenges associated with identifying which patient has cardiac dysfunction, then this tool becomes useful. It can help the managing physician um, make decisions with regards to the next best step or the next best test to get for the patient and how to manage them acutely with regards to therapies in the emergency room. I should also mention that this AI-enabled ECG was developed by a team of physicians and researchers at Mayo Clinic, and they have emergency use authorization through the FDA to use this AI-enabled ECG to screen patients who are suspected of COVID-19 or diagnosed with COVID-19 for cardiac dysfunction. Does AI have applications in terms of um, for patients to be, be diagnosed faster, treated faster, and Will we still need doctors and other healthcare providers if we have AI? Definitely. I do not believe AI is at that point yet where it can replace your physician. It definitely helps your physician be more effective in the care that they provide to you. It helps to improve diagnostic accuracy as well. And I would mention that this also represents a unique opportunity to identify high-risk cardiac patients in the emergency room that may have been missed otherwise. So this patient can be linked early to cardiovascular therapies um, might, that you might need to say in the outpatient settings. And the hope is that on the long term, if we identify this patient earlier, we can reduce morbidity and mortality. We actually have plans for a subsequent study to see how having this tool would affect long-term clinical outcomes. That's really interesting. I'm glad that I'm not, uh, that I'm still gonna be able to see my patients. It's wonderful, <laughs> I, I enjoy that. So. Yes, you definitely <laughs> will get to see your patients. Our hope is that this tool can help you provide better care to your patients. Uh, Demi, do you have anything else that you'd like to tell us about the study or any closing thoughts? Sure. I'd like to mention that this AI tool is now currently available across all Mayo Clinic sites in the United States. So it is run through an AI dashboard through the electronic medical records system. So for physicians who are willing to look at this, you can actually uh, run a report on any of your patients who have an ECG performed. It's wonderful. Thanks so much for sharing it with us today. I learned some new things from you today. Our thanks to Mayo Clinic cardiologist, Dr. Demi Edidin Shwayo. Shayo, <laughs> sorry, I should have you pronounce your name. Will you tell us your name, Dr. Yes. Demi? Dr. Demi Edidin Shwayo, thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for joining us today. We very much appreciate it. Thank you everyone for joining us on Mayo Clinic Q&A. We wish you a wonderful day. Mayo Clinic Q&A is a production of the Mayo Clinic News Network and is available wherever you get and subscribe to your favorite podcasts. To see a list of all Mayo Clinic podcasts, visit newsnetwork.mayoclinic.org. Then click on podcasts. Thanks for listening and be well. We hope you'll offer a review of this and other episodes when the option is available. Comments and questions can also be sent to Mayo Clinic News Network at mayo.edu.